Today I'll show you a Raspberry Pi Camera GUI tutorial using Pi Camera 2 and TKinter so we can get live preview photos and videos from our Raspberry Pi 4 camera. I'll briefly show you the camera I have connected to my Raspberry Pi 4. I'll share the code with you and at the end I'll troubleshoot an issue that I had when setting this up. This video is the exact same setup as I had before. I have that same OV5647 camera, 5 megapixel. It's connected to that really long ribbon and connected to my Raspberry Pi 4. Nothing uh, super fancy, but I'm just playing around with this camera. Now I've had this camera for a while. I just haven't used it a whole lot, but I've been really surprised at the images I've been able to get from it, especially in daylight. It's still a pretty good camera, and that's what we're going to be using today. Unlike Arduino and C++ code, Python is a lot easier to read and understand at a glance, and I have commented on different sections of the code for you to look at yourself. However, I will briefly highlight a few key points along the way. At the beginning of the code, we see the dependencies that we'll be importing. You should have most of these if you downloaded Bullseye OS. So here we have our code in Thonny. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And that should bring up our GUI, our GUI, our graphical user interface. There are other ways you can use your camera with Raspberry Pi, but I feel like an on-screen interface is the most intuitive. This part of the code creates the tkinter window for controlling the camera. It's the interface that you see, and it includes the title and window dimensions. Now I'm going to click on Preview, Start Preview, and then you get this box here, and it's bad lighting, but um, yeah, so now I'm going to move the, the box down and then click on Start Recording. You can see the timer below the, the picture, the image, and then now it's recording, and, and click Stop Recording. This is the part of the code that controls the countdown, and you can modify that. You can adjust the countdown speed if it's going too slow for you, or you can add a visual cue like a flash on each count, or you can even, uh, as of right now, you can't stop it before it hits zero, but you can also change that, and you can stop the countdown before it starts recording. So there are several ways that you can modify this to make it your own. If you look in the shell down at the bottom, you can see the file path that it's delivering the image to as I click on Take a Picture. And those images are in JPEG format, but you can change the format. For instance, you can turn it into a PNG by making these modifications in the code. Here are some pictures that I took, one in decent light and then one in not so good light. You can also change the resolution by modifying your code something like this. And here in my Pi Camera directory, you can see I have two files, one for videos and one for images. Now I'm going to shut down the interface here, and I'm going to open up my Pi Camera directory. And in that directory, I have two files, one for videos and one for images. And that's exactly where they save them to in JPEG format. It's as simple as that. Uh, you can see I've been pretty busy. I've actually deleted quite a few of these. And here are the videos that are exported in MP4 format. If you're interested in this code, I'll be posting it on Facebook and in the comments of this video. I'll also be directly emailing the code to the people on the email list. If you want to get on that list, check the description. If you do try this code out and you find yourself stuck like I did, um, maybe this will help. I'd like to show you what I did to resolve my issue. Now if you try this code out, you may have to do some updates or installs, and I just wanted to show you that a problem I ran into and how I fixed it, I think it may be helpful for you, especially if you have the same issue. Now from the command line, we're going to install some dependencies that we need for the code that we're running. You're going to see that we're going to install Python 3 pip. This is just a standard package manager for Python 3. Python 3 TK installs tkinter, which is Python's built-in GUI toolkit, and it lets us create windows, buttons, and labels for the interface that we'll be using. pill.imagetk is part of the pillow imaging library for Python, which lets us display images within the tkinter GUI. And the ffmpeg is a command line tool for handling audio and video processing. Now I'm going to upgrade to the latest version of Pi Camera 2. If you installed Bullseye OS with camera support, Pi Camera 2 is already installed, but if you have Bullseye Lite, you need to install it manually. If you watched the last video, you may already have Lube Camera installed. If you need to install it, go ahead and type these two lines into your command line. And now we're going to reboot. Now we're back here. We're going to try to run the program and see what happens. This may happen to you. You click Run. You may get this message here at the bottom. You see import error, cannot import name orientation from libcamera. Now this error indicates that the version of libcamera I have installed on my system, it doesn't include the orientation attribute that Pi Camera 2 is expecting. In other words, there's some kind of version mismatch between libcamera and Pi Camera 2. 
they don't play well together. So what we're going to do is update our version of LibCamera and we're going to downgrade our version of PyCamera 2. And we're going to do that by uninstalling PyCamera 2 and then we're going to reinstall at a lower uh, version. I think the latest version I saw was 0 0.3.25. We're going to try 0.10. But by the time you see this, it may not be an issue anymore, but uh, it does work for now. We're going to fast forward through the Pi Camera 2 install and reboot. Now you can go back to the command line and see if your camera works with the uh, lib camera installed. Type in the correct command and it does, it works. You pick up the camera here. There we go. And now we'll go back to Thani here and click on run, run our program. We should see the graphical user interface pop up here. We'll go over here and click on start preview. And there we go, we get video. So preview works, and the recording works, stop recording works, and I can take pictures. So everything works well after this little fix. Uh, hopefully you found a benefit out of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you do like this type of stuff, consider subscribing, and I will see you again with another video. Thanks for watching.